Hello and welcome to the sound of Banzuri. My name is Michael and here I want to show you the flutes of Alain Treitel, which is uh, an extraordinary flute maker, which I had the fortune to meet while we were here in Oroville. And um, yeah, I just want to, the flute that you heard was uh, this one here. And this is how it sounds without any reverb or any processing. <laughs> Yeah, the higher octaves. So of course it's to mention that on especially on the Banzuri, the the sound on the blowing uh, instruments in general, the sound is a very individual uh, matter. So what you hear is not only this flute, also my personal twist to it. Uh, but what I find really stunning about this flute in particular and the flutes, and I show you others from Alone Treadle as well, they are really they have a character and uh, you can modulate the sound. Uh, I think quite more than on on other flutes. Um, so just to give you some demonstration as much as I can. I can go for this mellow thing. But you can also add some more height frequencies in the way you blow and to give it some more some aggressiveness or some more crisp or however you want to say it. Then the lower octave. So this one was actually a special made one. I had the fortune to choose the bamboo by myself. I choose a quite thicker one. This one would have been used for a D flute and this is an Hindustani E flute. And I also fine tuned it by myself, um, which ended up in quite bigger holes. <laughs> and also I raised the calibration to a certain degree I wanted to have. I don't mind bigger holes and I actually appreciate them. Um, as big as they can be, just to get them uh, closed. For playing half notes and to be versatile with the meats, I think they are not, I have an advantage. And I also think they have an advantage for the sound. So what I found out is that when you open them more uh, to the back, this will open up the sound. But this edge, of course, defines the length of the column. So when you tune them up, you open them in this way. Um, generally, fruit makers, they open all evenly in the all, all the same directions. But I think this is just due to this discovery that I made by spending so much time tuning flutes over the last year that, and especially this one, I took a long time to fine tune that slowly, slowly. Uh, so opening those holes opened also the sound. There's another one from around title, another E, which is quite a different animal to me. <laughs> Let's play the basic scale also, the so no half notes like Yaman. Has a different character, no? But originally I took two of them because I wanted to be flexible with uh, intonation, uh, with uh, with um, calibration. Um, as you know, these are one piece of bamboo. You cannot tune them. So this one is higher than this one in the calibration. And this has for me a more female touch. Another one that I quite uh, use quite often, this is this year, an F flute. 
Hindustani F, that means this is good for playing Western music uh, because it's a C major scale, the default scale without no half notes. I can compare them directly to some other F flute that I have, for instance. Also a decent flute. But here again the versatility in formulating the sound. So I think clearly Alon's flutes, I love them. They have a, a very special um, quality in generating sound. And um, what I fairness uh, uh, for the fairness I have also to mention to be frank uh, that all of them I fine tuned by myself but I was uh, together with Alon in the um, uh, in the process of the making and um, I just um, uh, so I just took that on uh, that part I am very grateful to, to him actually that he showed me uh, uh, let me witness the process of tuning I will make some videos also on tuning flutes because uh, I lost my fear to have hands on those flutes. I spent years not touching them at all, and uh, which gives an unnecessary hard time to uh, work on intonation all the time. So literally the last year for me practicing, uh, especially on this flute, was not only practicing the flute and getting the intonation by playing, but also by fine-tuning the last bits and pieces. And I do not only play the Hindustani music on them, I also play Western music on them. And I wanted to get them ready for being able to be played in 12 keys with the most ease. So you end up having the necessity for the equal temperate system. But this is another topic for another video. I found even the equal temperate system on the flute also quite good if you want to go for the more authentic intonation for the Indian music. Because the equal temperate is just in the middle of those two swaras that you have to be flexible to choose or even more of them. Uh, you need to be uh, flexible to temper it according to the raga. And if you want to have a flute which is suitable for all ragas, not just a special section, then equal temperate especially is also good for the Indian music, <laughs> which was my surprising um, outcome or my surprising conclusion after quite some time uh, getting into that practical, that whole topic. All right, so thanks a lot for these flutes. I'm really happy every day to have them. Um, beside other flutes uh, that I still have uh, from other flute makers also, but um, uh, yeah, we need to have a variety of flutes to be ready to play if it's needed in 440 calibration. So, but this is also again a topic for another video. So, hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye bye.